Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you all for joining us today. We're very excited to discuss some remote hiring practices and how uh, small businesses can create exceptional experiences during the remote hiring process. I think that's very applicable right now, as I know I'm sure most of us are uh, probably working from home or working remotely. Um, we're going to take a few minutes before we get started just to let more people join. Uh, so we will get started shortly. Okay, everyone, uh, we're going to wait just another minute or so before we get started, but I just wanted to let everyone know we're just letting people filter in right now. So just hang tight. We are going to get started in just a minute or so. Okay, so uh, thank you again, everyone, for joining. Um, in just a few minutes, we're going to get started, but I wanted to take care of a few housekeeping items first and foremost. Um, during, If you have any questions that pop up during the discussion, um, you'll see at the bottom there is a Q&A section. Please feel free to put your questions there. Uh, we're going to have some time at the end to get to those questions, so don't worry about that. And also, after the session, once we've completed our discussion, um, we will be emailing you a recording of what we discussed, so you can get all these great resources for you on hand. Uh, and we'll also be sending you a few other resources as well. Um, so don't worry, you will get everything you need. Um, and yeah, so we're excited to discuss, you know, remote hiring, creating an exceptional experience during the remote hiring process. We know a lot of small businesses are probably going remote right now or have been remote for a while. And, uh, you know, business doesn't stop. That means you have to result to other practices to keep things going. And so we're very excited to have Career Plug with us today to discuss how to make sure that hiring process, even though it is remote, is as as optimal as possible for your business. So without further ado, I'm gonna let our presenter, Natalie Morgan from Career Plug, take the stage and uh, talk about some great things today. Thank you. 
Thank you. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, I'm Natalie Morgan. I am the Senior Director of People at Career Plug. Really excited to be talking to you about this topic today. Um, so what I do for Career Plug, I am over the HR and people department. Um, I also do a lot of education like this to teach best practices that we're learning in our own hiring um, and really help small business owners. So we've been remote obviously since COVID uh, last March, but made the decision to go remote first as a company over the summer. Um, but even pre-COVID, we were doing remote hiring across the country, kind of spreading out had remote employees. So today I really want to share with you a couple things. One, what's going on with hiring right now? Um, we have some great data from a recent report we did from our clients just learning about how they've adjusted their hiring process, uh, what trends are carrying forward into this current year that we can learn from. And then I really want to spend some time talking about remote hiring and how you can tie that into candidate experience and why it's going to benefit your business. Um, and then we will save plenty of time for Q&A. So keep those questions coming. I'm hoping we can have a really great dialogue in the second half of this webinar here. And I just want to thank you again for taking uh, this lunch hour for many of you to spend time on, on this topic here. Uh, I think the goal of any webinar or something is to be able to take at least one actionable thing away, some kind of aha moment for you. So I would encourage you to look for that throughout the webinar and get those questions ready so we can make sure you get as much value out of our time together as possible. So let's dive into the state of hiring. Um, so last month, uh, we had surveyed career plug users, primarily small business owners across a variety of industries, um, and from insurance, healthcare, cleaning services, restaurants, fitness, you name it, just to learn about how their hiring has changed um, in 2020 and what they expected in 2021. So I'm leading with this stat here that 61% of businesses have made changes to their hiring process during COVID-19 that they plan to keep in 2021. So not just, hey, we changed because we had to, right? We all had to be really adaptable last year. Uh, small businesses know that better than anyone, but that we've learned things from how we've adapted that we're going to carry forward, you know, riding out the, the pandemic here, but just best practices into the future and beyond. So I'm going to talk a little more about what we learned from that survey, because I think it can be really uh, insightful and, and set the scene for us. So we asked before COVID restrictions were in place in March, how much of your hiring process was done remotely. And you can see how this pie breaks out here. 44% um, uh, were doing it all in person, 75 uh, in person, 25 remote was the second biggest part of the pie. So majority of people, majority of their hiring process was in person, not a big surprise there. So let's look at how that shifted after those restrictions were put in place. Um, you can see that uh, those blue colors, uh, those two light blues, 100% remote, um, and that 75% remote, that if I go back one, very small pieces of the pie here, now we're taking up uh, closer to 40%. Um, shouldn't be a surprise, right? We are all practicing social distancing, making changes, um, but you can see how we've adjusted our hiring process here. So we asked more specifically, uh, what what are we actually going to keep using in 2021? What, what did we learn here? And though most respondents said that even if they do in-person interviews, they're spending more time beforehand on phone screens, assessments, uh, earlier in the hiring process, doing more validation before they get to any kind of in-person. So qualifying people up front has been really important. Um, some people have said this is just a COVID safety strategy. Others were really pleased, just increased efficiency in virtual interviews and plan to continue doing them after the pandemic to save time, right? It can be a lot more efficient to just hop on a video call for you and, and for the candidate often as well. Um, and you can see that extends into what people plan to do post hire. So for onboarding and for orientation into the business. So this was really interesting too. We asked, what changes have you made to your recruiting strategy as a result of COVID-19? 
50% said they didn't make any changes at all. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come back to that in a, in a minute and kind of what that means. But the number one change reported was adding new perks and benefits to attract candidates, um, which isn't a surprise. If you think about the market this last year, many uh, industries have struggled finding the candidate volume they need. Job seekers haven't been as active on the job boards um, since COVID hit. Uh, for a variety of reasons, right? Some people are spending more time taking care of their families. Some people have uh, existing conditions where they can't be interacting with the public for their own safety. Uh, for all those reasons together, uh, a lot of business owners, maybe you included, have found it hard to get the same quantity of candidates they need. One way then to kind of stand out above the competition is by really playing up perks, benefits, adding new ones to your team, uh, working on your employment brand, which is something we're gonna talk about uh, in, in the course of this presentation, but how you can enhance that for your company. Um, you can see the, the next one there, just to, to read through it, uh, was we're just hiring less. We're investing in our current team right now. Uh, hiring freezes are really common in 2020. So just putting more into your current team. Um, and then followed by we're hiring people who can work from anywhere, which is something Career Plug did. We did a little of that before, but we really opened up our hiring process um, this year since we decided to go remote first. Uh, we're based in Austin, Texas, but for example, I moved uh, this summer. I moved to Wisconsin to be closer to my family and worked remote. Um, and we've found that with a good deal of employees. Um, my colleague, Lauren, who's actually kind of behind the scenes on this call, spent a few months uh, traveling and, and working from a, a van as she traveled the West. Um, and that was also really successful. So people are getting a lot more adaptable, finding how much we can do just working remotely. And that's been a big benefit. So what's the number one challenge people are facing when it comes to hiring? Um, so you can see this pie here. Overwhelmingly, most people are saying lack of high quality candidates. And I just talked about how we're seeing less activity on the job boards this past year. So I want to tie that back uh, as a potential correlation in the data. So remember, nearly half of respondents um, are saying lack of quality candidates. That's the same number of people who claim they haven't made any changes to their recruitment process. So I see this as a, a big opportunity, right? You remember the, the definition of insanity, right? Doing the same thing, expecting different results. Um, if you haven't changed your hiring process, but you're now encountering different challenges, um, whether because of the pandemic or just other causes in the market, um, you need to adapt your recruitment strategy for that market and continue to get high quality candidates, ultimately to bring in great people for your team, right? And help grow your business um, and accomplish your goals. So that's a good transition into just remote hiring meets candidate experience. Uh, I'm really passionate about candidate experience and how it can transform small business owners the hiring process and thinking about it not just, yes, of course it's really nice for job seekers to have a good experience, but really the value that brings it back to your employment brand, bringing the right people onto your team who are aligned with your values and your vision and ultimately retaining them for the long haul. The number one recruiting strategy is always going to be retention. And that starts at the very beginning of the hiring process. So we did a survey um, in 2020, talking to job seekers, trying to figure out, hey, what does candidate experience mean to you? Is it important to you? How does it impact? your decisions, and then give us some specifics that we can share uh, with hiring managers so they can improve this. So right out of the gate, 50% uh, of job seekers, so one in two job seekers that we surveyed reported declining a job offer due to a poor experience during the hiring process. So this isn't, oh, they decided not to apply. Um, this is, they got a job offer and said no, because they had a poor experience with the hiring process. So this is, can really hurt you, right? I don't know if you've been, I've been at this stage too, you've gone through this whole hiring process, you found the candidate, all you wanna do is have someone in so you can start training them and be done with hiring. Hiring can be take a lot of time and be frustrating at points. And then to have that job offer declined and feel like you're starting um, over at ground zero, right? Or, or maybe you have a pipeline there, it can go to the next candidate, but it can be really painful. Um, so, 
we're going to talk about candidate experience and what we can do so this doesn't happen to you and that you are checking all those boxes throughout the pipeline so they have a great experience with you um, and you have great new hires coming onto your team. Um, so let's get a little more granular here. We asked them, why did you actually decline a job offer? Um, and a few of the top ones we're going to talk about. So one, compensation benefits didn't meet their expectations. So they're finding that out at the offer stage and it didn't meet what they thought. That, like off the bat, big opportunity to move that up in your hiring process so it's not coming at them. Um, but two, something that's really uh, trainable here is just having a negative experience with people during the interview process. Um, so whatever it may be, who are they interacting with, they didn't feel good about it, they had a bad experience there. Um, and then followed by role and responsibilities were different from what I expected. So kind of a, a theme between those uh, one and three there, expectations not being what they thought they were, um, big opportunity to put more up front. So I'm gonna go through a couple strategies here on just how can we create more positive candidate experiences. Uh, lots of ways to do that. But we're going to talk about showing who you are, being more authentic up front, uh, your careers page, how it can really work for you and how you can enhance that. Uh, providing the most important information up front. I've already hammered on that. I'm going to keep doing it. I think that's really important. Um, communicating really quickly with applicants after they apply. And uh, a metaphor I really like just talking about hiring like you sell and how that can be a really useful um, framing for your recruiting process. So let's start with show who you are. So just for a moment, step back, uh, pretend you are a job seeker and you're looking at your company, right? You, you found this company. What is the first thing you are going to learn about this company as a job seeker? Um, are you going to find them through their social media? Maybe you're coming through the website. Maybe you're on Indeed and you find the job description that way. Um, and I say that because not everyone's going to be familiar with who you are and your brand. Some people will, um, but some people won't, and they're going to go through this research process. So my advice is to lead with your purpose, um, your, your mission, your values, your vision, lead with that on your careers page and on your job postings. You want to attract candidates who value the same things you do, right? And there are candidates out there. People are going to share your vision, get excited about what you're doing, but they're not going to be able to find you if you're not making that information available to them. So careers page and job posting, make sure your online presence just reflects these values too. So I mentioned um, social media, whatever sites you use, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, uh, just your LinkedIn, um, showing off your brand there. And then also uh, reviews. So I'm talking about employee reviews here. So Glassdoor, Indeed, um, are you asking employees to go, go leave reviews there? What are they saying about your company? And then stay engaged with those sites. Show that you're following up. Um, make sure your presence is built out there. Job seekers are, are definitely going to look you up. So uh, take a step ahead of them, right? Be a little proactive um, and control what you can control about how your brand is showing up when people research you. And then lastly, your hiring process. So I want you to think about how your val values are showing up in your hiring process right now. Um, are you talking about them in your interviews? Are you explaining them as part of your company culture? Are you asking questions that tie back to your mission and your values? Um, so say you had a, a value to, to go above and beyond, right? Are you asking candidates, hey, tell me about a time when you went above and beyond? Are you looking for that in people? Um, are you sharing your long-term vision with candidates? One thing I do at Career Plug that we've had a really positive response to is I attach our, our three-year vision. We have a just a couple page document that goes into detail about where we wanna go at a high level, where we see ourselves going as a company. I attach that to interview invites um, and say, hey, like PS, take a look at this. Um, and that's a good way for either people to get really excited and bought in, um, to come with questions during the interview, um, or self-select out, right? If they're not um, on that same train, they don't wanna go that direction. Um, we're being really upfront about that. 
So I, I pulled a couple just screenshots here of how CareerPlug does this in our hiring process. Um, you see in the, the bottom left, that's just the top of our, our vision that we share. Um, our values on the top, uh, we have those on our website. We reference them in our careers page. And then additionally, I created a video that we have on our careers page that goes through CareerPlug's hiring process. Um, so this is, it's not like a full marketing branded video of here's why you should work at career plug. It's pretty simple of just me saying, Hey, here's who we are. Here's our values and why they're important to us. And here's what to expect out of our hiring process. Here's the different steps. Here's how we're going to communicate with you. Um, and thank you for applying. And I, I can't tell you how much just doing a simple video like that has helped to track candidates and made a difference. Um, we hear it all the time after people first apply saying, hey, I thought that was really cool. That made me want to apply even more. Um, it doesn't need to be the, this huge spend. It doesn't even need to be a video. Uh, I think just putting your hiring process up front for people is a great differentiator um, and showing how much you value communicating with candidates. It can go a long way. Um, so I've been talking about your careers page a lot, um, and there's a couple ways you can enhance it here, but let me just preface it by your careers page is your hub for recruiting and hiring, right? Um, just like your, your marketing website is your hub for your brand and new sales coming in, right? That's all your marketing messaging there. Your careers page is the same thing um, for your recruiting process. So spend a little time making sure it's really reflective of who you are, um, like little things, like including real company photos, as I listed here, previewing your hiring process, like I just talked about, um, and asking for employee testimonials. That's a screenshot of some that are on our website here. Um, that social proof uh, makes a difference for candidates. Um, other things that we include on our careers page, it's a brief statement about how we put people first and our values and how that shows up. We have something about, hey, we're a remote first company and this is what it means for our culture, um, as well as a anti-racism statement and our commitment to diversity. Um, so think about what's important to your brand. Um, you could even think about, hey, what questions do I usually get from candidates really early in the process? Um, that are maybe indications that I could put that more out into my brands, give people more information up front. Um, another thing I'll notice just from a hiring manager perspective is I, I put a lot out there for career plug, a lot of information for people to research. It becomes really obvious when people don't research the company that or don't read that vision, right? Or um, ask really basic questions that they, they could have found. Um, like, what do you do? I'm like, oh, that was, that was all over our website. Um, so I, I look at for candidates who look at the, have done the research and use that as a jumping off point for questions and to learn more. Um, it's a little more of a red flag to me, to be honest, when, when they haven't, but you can't blame candidates for that if you are not being more upfront and, and uh, giving people things to look at and learn about from your company. So I've talked a lot about careers page. Um, and how that's important. And I, I want to share this stat with you because I find it so powerful. So this is from our 2020 industry benchmark report. Um, this was the report we did for our clients. We looked at data across our 10,000 people we work with, uh, like 10 million applicants um, to figure out, hey, where are hires really coming from and where, where are the best hires coming from? So what this is showing here is that Job boards, though they are the most common source for your applicants across all industries, 80% um, of your applications in every industry in our analysis, uh, more than 90% of applications in some industries were coming from job boards. And I'm talking about like Indeed and ZipRecruiter, LinkedIn, um, when I say that. But so for absolute volume, they do really well, but you can see that 0.22% at the top here, that's the conversion rate. That's how many hires um, or applicants are actually converted into hires there. So not, not that high. Um, so despite being the source for most applicants, they don't produce hires at the same rate as other sources. So look over at careers page. Applicants who are um, coming through your careers page, 23 times more likely to be hired than an applicant from a job board. 
So reason being, um, they are probably learned a lot more about your company. They might be coming in from a more uh, niche source. So maybe you had posted on social media um, and they're following that link back to your careers page and your job posting there. Maybe you posted on a industry specific job board or a local or university job site. Um, you're putting your careers page out there in different ways. Um, you're not gonna get the same volume of applicants, but you're gonna get uh, more quality applicants that way. Um, and then you can go over and look at referrals if you haven't already 85 times more likely to be hired um, than an applicant from a job board. So if you're not utilizing referrals, you're not advertising to your employees and your current network, uh, please do. This is an easy win. Um, referrals are hired at a much higher rate there than any others. So looking at this, I don't want you to take away, hey, I should just go after referrals or, or just do these niche sources. It's important to diversify where your applicants are coming from. You wanna use all three of these together. You're still gonna get, get great hires from job boards. It's, it's just a more of a, a volume, a numbers game there, but don't ignore um, these more niche sources that aren't gonna give you as many applicants, but the quality can be really impactful um, and why you should put energy into kind of curating your employment brand. So we've been talking just kind of general about uh, can experience, but this is where I can start tying in remote hiring process a little bit. Um, include content about what remote work looks like right now for your company. We're all in different phases of this. Um, maybe some of you just part of the hiring process is remote, but you're operating in person. Maybe it's a, a hybrid model. Maybe you're remote now, but you plan to go back. Um, we're all in different situations. So job seekers don't know unless we, we tell them where we're at. Um, so what I did as I quick couple sentences on our careers page, hey, this is our quick remote story. We went remote then because we're planning to be remote forever. You can learn more about it here. Um, even if it's not on your careers page, um, being prepared to share that upfront uh, in the phone screen or early stages of your process. Uh, people people want to know, right? It's, it's their lives, they're making plans around this. Um, so give them a heads up about what remote hiring is going to look like. And then if you are in person, how are you protecting your employees? Um, since COVID happened, applicants want to know what you're doing to keep your employees and your clients safe. So whether that's policies, procedures, protective equipment, whatever that may be for your business, include that information in your job descriptions and on your careers page. It's a pretty common question uh, you're gonna get no matter what these days is, hey, what was your COVID response plan? How are you taking care of employees? Um, it's a great gesture of, of goodwill and kind of creating a positive feeling about your brand if you can include that information upfront in your careers page and on your job postings. Excellent. So another piece of, of data here just to inform your hiring process kind of goes back to, hey, put things up front. Uh, we, in our candidate experience survey uh, this past year, asked, hey, when do you expect to learn the following things in the hiring process? And I'll, I'll pull out a couple things here, was that 32% expect to be informed about compensation uh, in the job post itself. Um, so that's a pretty decent percentage there and goes maybe contrary to some older school thoughts of hiring and thinking about, hey, when do we actually discuss compensation? But I am a big fan of this and highly recommend, if you don't already, to include compensation in the job post itself, whether it's an exact amount or it's that range. Um, twofold, one, obviously candidates care about this and the experience. Uh, it is creates a more um, a baseline for equity and diversity to be upfront about, hey, this is what we're paying for the position. Um, at CareerPlug, we actually, we put the exact amount in our job postings. We try to be really transparent about compensation. And then we say, hey, we don't negotiate on this. Um, and that's really an effort towards just having a more equitable and diverse pipeline and, and employee base, right? That we're, we're not introducing any room for, for bias or subjectivity there. Um, another reason though, is that if you're posting through job boards, so um, you're posting on Indeed, for example, they're gonna ask you kind of an optional, hey, do you wanna put compensation in? 
Um, and that, if you do use that field, increases your visibility on the job boards. Um, so for example, maybe you're hiring for um, some kind of hourly position, you have, uh, you put $20 an hour in, um, if a job seeker is looking on the job boards, they can filter by those compensation ranges and your job post will show up. If you don't put any compensation in, but job seekers are using those compensation filters, your job's not gonna appear to them. They don't know how much you're paying. So you're getting a lot less visibility on the job board. So a, a few reasons just to consider uh, being a little more upfront with your compensation. And then the other stat I pulled out here is just to validate what we've already been talking about is people expect to understand your company and cu culture and your benefits before applying. 20% is not the whole pie, right? Um, you can look at where they expect to learn it um, during the process and certainly you'll build on that through interviews, um, but, but leading with as much as you can into your employment brand there. Another thing that made a big difference to candidate experience is how quickly you uh, reply to someone after they apply. That makes sense, right? People don't like waiting around forever. So this was 30% of job seekers said, hey, the most important thing that to me when it comes to a positive candidate experience is how quickly someone gets back to me. Um, so keep that in mind as you're going through your hiring process. And you, this is where that kind of metaphor of uh, sales comes in. Would you let a, a fresh sales lead sit around for a week without uh, following up with them? Probably not. So apply that same mindset to great candidates who come through. Um, excellent candidates, like no matter the state of the market, um, no matter if it, it kind of switches back to a um, employer's market here, they're always going to have their pick of where they can apply, where they want to work for. And then those are the people you want, right? Those top candidates. Um, so following up with them really quickly, as far as like tactical strategies to do this, put some time on your calendar, um, probably daily if you're actively hiring right now, just to review candidates and then quickly make decisions. Don't get stuck in, hey, maybe I'm going to come back to that later and see what happens. Um, ask the most important questions on that application up front. Usually it's just a couple things you need to know right away about someone of, hey, do I wanna have a conversation with them? Or maybe have them take an assessment or no, they're not gonna be a good fit. Um, so I should just politely reject them now and move forward. It can get really easy if you're doing a lot of high volume hiring, you're getting a lot of applicants in to get stuck in the kind of decision paralysis, um, but Think about what do you need to know up front that you can make quick decisions, therefore uh, contributing to a great candidate experience because you're replying to people quickly and moving that along. Um, one way you might want to do this is with text messages. These are just some interesting stats that we found of people who have been using text messages with CareerPlug uh, versus email. Um, so text messages are open nearly five times more than email. They receive 7.5 times more responses and 60 times faster than email. So it's a great way um, to communicate quickly with candidates. Uh, I know we have a lot of career plug people on the call, so that's an option um, in your account. And obviously people need to opt in before you start texting them. If this isn't for you, um, another alternative um, for email, kind of old school, but pick up the phone. If someone really great comes in, it is totally okay to just call someone and leave a message and say, hey, I wanna connect soon. Um, just like, again, you would kind of putting on that recruiter hat, right? If that's not usually our main jobs on the call, right? But we're all stepping into that more proactive recruiting mindset when we're hiring for the best people. Leads right in to hire like you sell. I've alluded to this a couple of times, but I like this visual a lot. So thinking about how a great sales leader is building processes, setting goals, holding people accountable for results, right? Um, the sales processes and goals pave the way for those results. If you treat your hiring process like your sales process, so you have a compelling offer, you're, you're qualifying those prospects, you're following up quickly and regularly, defining your hiring process and tracking results, um, that's gonna get you to predictably great hires if you do the same thing. So following the same process, if you use an applicant tracking system um, or an ATS, same thing, uh, that's basically what your 
ATS is your hiring, what your CRM is for your sales team. So it helps you improve those results at every stage of the hiring process. Career Plug is an ATS, so I'm biased here. I use that for our own hiring process, but my general advice would be just to create a process for yourself, um, whether that is just a really efficiently uh, efficient spreadsheet for your small business, um, making sure you have a predictable process to get to hires. And then let me tie this back to, to remote. Um, hopefully what you're seeing is that you should be doing a lot of the same things you'd be doing in person for can experience, translated that to your remote process. Um, so here's one example of what a hiring process looks like. And my, my advice and what I, I really wanna hammer home is to adapt your hiring process for remote, but don't, don't cut corners. So change your steps to remote, but don't remove them all together. You still wanna figure out how to do exercises or evaluations that are once done in person remotely, or if there was something you were doing in person or, or feel like you could only get from that in-person interaction, think about a new step or a new question, um, something that is gonna evaluate the same thing in a different way that can be done remotely. I'll give you an example of how this has showed up for me in my own hiring. So we have a step in our hiring process called the motivational interview. This is done at the, the last stage of the hiring process where we're asking candidates about, about their future. Like, tell me about what your career looks like in the next three to five years. It feels really awesome to you. Um, tell me about what outside of work um, would feel really awesome to you. I'm kind of doing some some future goal setting together to make sure we can help them reach those goals. And for this exercise, I would stand up in our, our conference room and go to the whiteboard. And we kind of like, we'd whiteboard this together. The candidate could see it. It was a little more interactive. It broke up just the sitting and asking questions back and forth format of the hiring process. And I really valued that in our process. So even before COVID hit, we had started to do some remote hiring. Um, for us, it was for some engineers across the country and they weren't gonna fly in for the interview process. So I adapted this uh, to be remote. And I had a pretty simple solution in my case where instead of doing the whiteboard, I created a Google doc and I shared my screen. And sure, you don't get that energy of moving around the room, but I found it was just as effective as, hey, we're looking at the same thing together. It's breaking up the interview process. We're still talking about the same things here. Um, and it felt a lot more collaborative since we were kind of had this living document together. Now that might not apply to your hiring process, but I want you to think about what are stuff that you really valued about in-person interactions that maybe you can't do right now um, or don't want to do in the future. What what would still get to the heart of whatever that exercise was? How you, can you still evaluate for that thing? Don't just cut it out and say, oh, I'm not gonna do that step anymore um, without replacing it with something else. Remote hiring doesn't mean um, your quality for your hiring should go down at all. If anything, it should go up because you're going to look for a little different skill sets, especially if they're gonna be working remotely um, all or part of the time, you might focus a little more on how self-motivated someone is, right? How does someone manage their time um, that maybe you wouldn't think about asking if they were just gonna be in the office. So I have a few tips on just remote interviewing itself. I think we're all at different stages of this, but whether you've done it or not, here are some reminders uh, that I've learned through this year. Um, tactical things, include instructions on how to access the interview in the invite. Make sure you're sending calendar invites uh, to whoever you're interviewing with. Include that Zoom link, the Google Hangout. Um, if you're using some other method, include instructions there. Really try to just smooth that process, right? People have enough anxiety coming into interviews, give them what they need. Um, for yourself, make sure you're closing out all your virtual distractions. Uh, I think this is harder for a lot of people more than it was just in the office. When you're, you're in a room, maybe you don't have a computer before you. Uh, now we do. Technology is right in front of us at all times. So close out your, your email, your Slack. Um, just normal etiquette rules still apply here. You want to have all your attention on the candidate so you can really evaluate them and, and get to know them and make sure they're going to be the right hire for your team. 
also people can definitely tell when you're working on something else. Um, something I do since I take notes during interview process. So I'm, I am typing and sometimes looking at my other screen. I just tell people up front, like, Hey, I'm going to be taking notes. I promise I'm not working on anything else. Um, just to set that expectation that my focus is going to be on them. Um, as I'm sure all of you have discovered over the past year, life and tech problems are going to happen when you are doing just remote work in general. Uh, be gracious with that. I think we all are with each other, whether that is, you know, a quick internet glitch or um, a kid running into the middle of the interview. Um, extend that same grace to your candidates um, as you would to yourself and your team right now. And then lastly, sync with other interviewers after the interview ends. And I put this on here because I think it's a natural thing that happens if you are in an office, you're interviewing with a couple other team members, and the candidate leaves and you stay in the conference room and, and you sync for a little bit and get feedback. Um, what you don't want to lose that in a remote environment, whether it's staying on the call a little bit after um, with those other interviewers um, or scheduling a time later, make sure you're still processing feedback from other interviewers um, in a timely manner there and just adapting it for your work environment. Um, and I mentioned that on the side, just like normal etiquette still applies for interviews. Um, don't be doing other work, make sure you're prepared for the interview and then leave time for questions um, for the candidate to ask you. Um, a rule I hear that I like is about a quarter of the interview time, um, you should plan for the candidate to ask questions there. All right, so I am nearing the end here um, and I'm hoping this is sparking some, some questions and dialogue since we're gonna have time for some Q and A. Um, I, I know we have a lot of Career Plug folks on the call, but if you are not familiar with Career Plug, you're confused what I'm talking about. We're a hiring software company. Um, so we work primarily with small businesses. Um, we to post jobs, promote it out there to job boards. Um, qualify applicants, manage your hiring process, and then evaluate and hire the right person. Um, so we have a lot of great hiring resources. Um, whether you're a client with us or not, I recommend just going to our, our resources section on our website. It's just careerplug.com slash blog. A lot more information on what I'm talking about here I've referenced about how to build a hiring process. There's remote hiring tips there, a lot of templates that you can use, as well as all the reports and data that I've referred to throughout this deck. Um, you can go download um, for free there and, and peruse. So definitely a lot of, of quality information. So I'm actually gonna hand it to Benchmark One real quick, and then we're gonna come back and do some Q&A together. Thank you so much, Natalie. That was so, so informative and helpful. Um, I mean, I learned so much just by listening to you and your tips, and I really appreciate it. And we do have some really great questions to get to, but before we get there, I just want to interject a little bit and tell everybody what Benchmark One is all about. Um, something that Benchmark One and Career Plug have in common is that we uh, love to empower small businesses to kind of make their lives easier. We know that small businesses um, are really doing a lot. They're basically doing everything. Um, they, you know, are the marketing department, they are the sales department, they are the hiring department. So um, what our tools have in common is that they help empower those small businesses to be better and more efficient so that they can get everything that they need to get done and thrive. Um, so Benchmark One is a marketing automation CRM and sales solution for small businesses. We help uh, small businesses find an effective and, and easy way to nurture their prospective clients so that they can take those site visitors, turn them into leads, nurture them, and eventually increase their customer base. So um, just wanted to kind of interject, tell you a little bit about us. We actually have um, a link here to a demo as well as a link to sign up to use our software totally free. That is that means you will not be paying anything to use our software. Um, it is a scaled back version of what our software offers, but there are some really great um, features that um, are really helpful to, you know, increase your sales and marketing efforts. <clears throat> and like I said, we will be emailing everybody these links and these resources afterwards so that you can kind of check them, uh, check them out in your own time. So with that said, I'd love to get to some of these great questions that we have. Um, so Natalie, I'm going to dive right in. Um, the first question we received, and I'm actually curious, curious about this myself, um, how do you know how small businesses could um, 
can access their reviews on Glassdoor? I don't know if you get that question a lot or if you guys know how they can actually access their reviews on Glassdoor. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, so a couple steps there. I mean, one, if you just go to glassdoor.com um, and type in your business, see if you have a business profile already and if people are leaving reviews. Um, once you're on that, um, you can claim that page. So you ha you can have an employer account with Glassdoor that is free. Um, there, there's like upsells and stuff, but you can claim your employer account on Glassdoor and add other photos or branding things. And that also gives you the ability to respond to any review, which I definitely recommend you do, even if you get negative reviews, thank people for their feedback and then talk out to the audience of what you're, what you're doing about it. Um, so don't get into like fights with people in reviews, but use that as a platform <laughs> to contradict. Um, but you should be able to, if you just go um, search your, your company name on Glassdoor, be able to find it. I know um, there, there might be a case where your specific business isn't on there. I know a lot of like maybe franchises, for example, um, maybe just your whole brand is represented instead of your particular um, location or the franchisee. Um, but you can go take a look at that and just make sure you, if you can go claim your employer page so you can have some control there. Awesome. <clears throat> so the next question we have is, does CareerPlug offer data on market area compensation rates per certain jobs? Great question. So that is not our area of expertise, but let me give you a couple recommendations of where I go to look at, at compensation. So I, I recommend using a variety of sites, right? And these are, you can get a lot of free data up there um, and, and comparing what they say. So I'll start again, Glassdoor. Um, if you go to the salary section on Glassdoor, you can look up rates there. You can filter um, by your, your area. Um, Indeed also collects compensation information for free. Again, you can filter it. Um, other great ones, um, salary.com has a lot of free information out there mm -hmm. um, as well as um, Payscale actually has some free information too. Um, so my recommendation is just using those free resources. Um, of course, you can upgrade and do paid things too and get great da data, um, but th that's what I do for my own uh, market research. Awesome. Um, okay, so we have another question here. Just kind of curious if you have any tips or suggestions for um, people who are hiring that are maybe trying to weed out uh, prospective new hires that are really just looking for benefits. Um, you know, is there any tips for that? Is it sort of like during the hiring process, you kind of just have to trust your instincts on it? Or do you have any sort of actionable items they can use to weed out people that maybe aren't looking for a career, a long lasting career, or rather just looking for, you know, the perks and benefits that come with a certain position? I, I totally hear you as like important as comp and benefits are. And I, I do think they are important um, when that is someone's number one motivator for being with your company or for their job, that's not a great retention strategy. So I'm really glad we got that comment. Um, my, this is where um, finding people who connect with your values and your vision is really important. Um, and a really simple question I <laughs> asked in the phone screen that, that can kind of weed some of this out. Um, I ask, tell me about the next like ideal position and company for you. Like what is really important to you um, in your next role? And what I'm looking for there is impact and culture and like energy to do it. And I have gotten people on phone screens before just said like, I just, oh, I just like need a job or something like that. And that's, <laughs> that's not very compelling to me. Um, that is one good way to kind of suss out like what's important to someone really early on. Got it. Um, okay, this question I really love because I think a lot of small businesses can empathize with this. Um, the question is, I compete with big employers in my area. I cannot compete with the benefits they offer and oftentimes the pay. Do you suggest I offer perks they may not? I love this question. And I think that's so fair for small business owners. And, and I relate to it um, as a... Career Plug is a smaller company um, and we are in the Austin area and we have a lot of really big players there. And to be frank, we don't have the same benefits and, and pay that Google does, for example. That's sometimes who we're competing with. Um, so one, I would say you don't have to like go outside of what you can financially do, right, um, to offer. What I would do instead is play up 
what play up those perks, play up what makes you unique. Um, so for career plug for us, maybe we, we couldn't offer the, the same tangible benefit, but we're saying, hey, we're really flexible with, with work or we have remote work that doesn't cost us anything. Um, or we really sell them on our mission and vision that there's a reason why we put our vision so upfront in our hiring process for all the reasons I said earlier, but one to get people really excited about the impact that they can have here and what they want to do. That helps us attract people who, who care more the, about that work rather than just comp and benefits um, and are going to help us get there. So really like selling that brand and your story up front. Um, we talk a lot about we're a, a bootstrapped um, software company. That means we, we don't have outside investors. We have a really organic pace to growth. Um, we have a a big value on work-life balance and, and can demonstrate that, right? That we're not expecting, we don't have people work 80 hours a week. So mm -hmm. think about what, what makes your company unique? Why do people actually like working for, your, for you? And like, ask mm -hmm. your employees this, ask your people who have been there a long time or top performers and pull out their stories, right? Mm -hmm. Those intangibles that maybe aren't tied to monetary things and talk about those on your careers page and your job postings. I love that. I think that's so true. Um, a lot of times, you know, when you're looking to bring on new employees, you have to also consider what kind of employees do you want? And that kind of coincides with, you know, you want employees that want to grow, that want to be with a company for a long time, that um, aren't necessarily driven completely by money, but are also driven by the experience that they'll have. And I think that's, you know, just totally relates to what you've been talking about in terms of showing your um, prospects who your brand is and who your company is, letting them know, you know, exactly what they're getting so that there's transparency up front and so that they understand, okay, so I may not, you know, get salary I was hoping, but in lieu of that, I am getting something else which can offer me much longer value, you know, in, you know, in the long run. So yeah, love that. Exactly. Um, um oh, and I just want to call that out. Um, yeah. growth opportunities and stuff and like growth path, like you can call that out as, as a perk. And if you have mm -hmm. like, uh, actual like, growth plans for positions, that's, that's a big selling point for a lot of mm -hmm. people. Well, and also with some of these newer industries and these newer, um, you know, every year there's a new industry and there's a new kind of business need for a new business. A lot of times when you're bringing people on for those, it's, it is a lot, a lot about, you know, you're going to learn here. You're going to learn this industry. You're going to um, set yourself up for the long run in other ways. So I think just kind of positioning it that way is also a really good selling point. Um, and just to remind everyone, yes, we will be sending out a recording of the presentation after this. So don't worry, you're going to get all these great answers and all these great tips um, to use at your leisure. Um, and then there's one more thing I wanted to make sure we address. So I know this kind of shift from remote to, or I'm sorry, from in-person to remote hiring is probably a little scary for some people who haven't really facilitated that or haven't done much of that. For people who are still looking for that in-person connection with candidates, how can they make sure that they're hiring the right person if they're using a remote process? Yeah, that, that's a great question. And I, I think that was reflected in the data we gathered from the survey of, of people saying, hey, I, I still want this in person after like, I don't wanna go all remote. And I, I understand that, right? So one, we're just like craving it after this, this year apart from each other. Um, but if you're used to just reading people in person, um, that can be a very grounded connection there for you. Mm -hmm. um, my, my answer to that is to dig a little deeper into, into why, right? Um, what am I learning from someone in person that's important to me? How am I learning that right now? And think about how you can learn the same things during your remote hiring process. Is it maybe that there, there's more casual time where you took someone out to lunch or like what elements are you learning outside of just that interview interaction? How can you cultivate that during a remote interview? Um, and I, I would say like, in the future, you might go back to having some in-person or might do it kind of as a hybrid model. Um, and that's still okay. One thing I think about now that we are a remote first company is that no matter if we can see people in person in the future, which we will be able to, and we'll get together as a team, 
I'm still going to run all our hiring process remote because that's mainly how you're interacting with someone and seeing how someone carries themselves remotely, conducts themselves through like virtual communication and world. That's now a huge indicator of how they're going to perform at work in a virtual environment. So that matches up a lot better. Um, so just thinking about how is my hiring process going to reflect what they're actually going to be doing at work. Perfect. Okay, we have one more question. And this seems to be um, geared towards like a more commission based role, um, or maybe like a sales based role. Um, it, candidates seem much more focused on stability given the current climate, the pandemic that's happening right now. Um, and they're more hesitant about a commission based role. How would you change the introduction of a performance based position with the current climate? What a great question. Um, I, I really love that answer. And I, I probably don't have a perfect answer, but here's, here's what came to mind for me is one, um, so if they're worried about the performance base, get, as you're introducing that, give them some historicals or context, right? Are, have people been hitting those performance-based goals? What resources or training are you giving somebody to do it? Or is it you're throwing them into the wild. Um, we have similar roles at Career Plug, right? Um, everyone at the company has some kind of performance-based part of their compensation plan. And how I kind of introduce it is, yes, here's the base, here's what this means, here's how you're measured for this variable comp part, and here's the historicals. Here's how we performed as a company in these metrics. So I think my best advice is just to be really transparent about it. Um, and if you have struggled in it, say like, hey, we, we've been struggling this, this is maybe why we wanna hire and have you help solve this problem for us. Um, and so that's where I would start um, and maybe just being a little more flexible and ensuring that that base, that stability is like, hey, we got you and here's how we're gonna support you on that variable comp piece. Love it. Well, thank you so much. Okay. So that's pretty much all we have time for today, guys. Um, if anybody had a question or if a question pops up and you know, you want an answer, don't worry. Like I said, we're going to be reaching out to you afterwards. Um, so you will have a chance to have, um, that, that question answered. So I want to just thank everyone for joining us today and uh, taking some time to chat about remote hiring practices. Thank you so much, Career Plug and Natalie. We offered such amazing tips. Um, we really appreciated the discussion. Um, and yeah, I, we will be emailing you guys probably tomorrow with all these resources. So thanks again and have a great rest of your week. Thank you. Bye everyone.